Hello and welcome to SL Techie Guy. You are watching TCP IP overview. The most common protocol that is used for communication across the network today is TCP IP. Well, there are a couple of things you need to know about TCP IP and that is what we are going to talk about here. So, there is a lot for us to cover in this lesson. So, let's go ahead and get started. When it comes to TCP IP, we have got to think of it as a communication language. This is how two computers or two devices communicate with one another. Now think about languages. If we were speaking, well, I am speaking right now English, right? But think about if I was speaking Hindi and you didn't understand any Hindi word. Or I was speaking Sinhala and you didn't understand any Sinhala word. How are we supposed to communicate with each other? The good thing is TCP IP is the default standard that exists. So all of our Mac people and all of our Windows people and all of our Linux people and even our Unix people all communicate using TCP IP. Now TCP IP is actually a suite of protocols, right? There are several protocols that exist. In fact, notice that TCP there is actually a slash and then an IP. TCP stands for the transmission control protocol and IP stands for the internet protocol. There is actually the user datagram protocol also. There is ARP, the address resolution protocol and so on and so forth. There are a lot of different protocols that actually make up TCP IP. TCP and IP are the two main protocols that we use but there is a whole suite of them available to us. Now in order for us to communicate we do have to have what is called an IP address. An IP address today is typically what is called an IP version 4 address okay. Meaning that we have an IP address that is going to be broken down into four separate numbers. Now the IP address is broken down really into two sections. Actually two parts right. One part is called the network address. Now network address, think of this kind of like the street. This defines the network that we exist on inside the entire planet, right? Then we have what is called the host address. And the host address is kind of like the home address. I mean, if you think about sending a letter to somebody, right? You write down the number, uh, house address, right? Following the street. Well. With an IP address, we do a very similar process because we need to know what network you are part of and once we get to that network, which host you are on that given network. There is also what is called a subnet mask and a subnet mask helps us understand where the dividing line is between the network portion and the host portion of your IP address. The subnet mask also helps us understand what class IP address we have. There is actually three main classes that we are going to talk about here in just a minute, okay? We also have as part of the IP address what is called the default gateway or the router. The default gateway or that router is an address that says if we don't have that host, the person you want to communicate with, that printer or server on your network, how can I get there? And that is what the default gateway or the router is. It is the path to help us get there. Once again there are two different types of IP addresses today. The most common one is IP version 4 and this is the one that is been around for a long time like back in 1960s. The problem is we are almost out of addresses right. Well actually in theory we are out of IP version 4 addresses. So that's where the next generation of IP address is coming into play and that is IP version 6. But the good thing is they are all part of the same suite. Those same suite of protocols that is going to allow us to be able to communicate. When it comes to IP addressing remember that every device that is going to connect into our network has to have one. And an IP address is actually broken down into what is called a dotted decibel notation. If you take a look at the numbers that we have here. 
you will notice it is 192.168.8.150 so that is that dotted decimal notation now notice we actually have four separate decimal values 192 168 8 and 150 so four separate decimal values that make up our ip address each decimal number is actually a representation of eight binary bits computers actually understand binary bits right binaries zeros and ones so what we actually do is take each number like 192 and we break that down into eight binary bits and we take 168 and we break that also into eight binary bits so that means we have a total of 32 binary bits inside of each ip address it is broken down into four groups and each group once again has eight bits so eight times four that is 32 bits we actually refer to it as an octet. Each set of binary bits is referred to as an octet. So we actually have what are called four octets or four groups of eight bits. Now, an IP address once again consists of a network portion and a host portion to our IP address. Now, if we actually take a look at the subdate mask, notice that it is 255.255.255.0 so when i compare that to the ip address my actual network portion of my ip address is 192.168.8 the host portion which represents the computer i am on on this particular network is 150 so that is where that subnet mask comes in because it helps confirm it or at least give us an idea where the dividing line is between our network portion and the host portion of our IP address.